interesting little thing. This was sold as a vehicle interior courtesy light, but it's not wired. It's re rechargeable. And as packaged, it comes in this style of packaging for a very specific reason. It's always active. So it comes with these Velcro pads for attaching it to a surface, but the positioning of them in the foam packaging is such that it keeps the uh, touch sensor at enough distance that during shipping, it can't be triggered on. Maybe I can squeeze it hard enough. No. Oh, there's something actually made a plasticky crunching noise. Okay. Oh, but as soon as you take it out. So it is a very close proximity sensor. The idea being then that you put these uh, the Velcro pads, one in the back of this, one in the uh, vehicle, and you can, or a cupboard, and you can just stick this up and uh, use it as desired. To charge it, I keep touching that sensor. I can see already that they've got a the bit of foam with the sort of mesh on it as the sensor to bring it up to the surface of the plastic. But to charge it, you just plug it into a suitable charger. Is this going to take a charge? And the red LED lights to show it's charging, and at end of charge, it just goes out. It doesn't go red to green. It's just a very simple thing. So I don't think that there's going to be anything too fancy in this. I don't think there's going to be a microcontroller or anything. It's most likely just going to be one of the... Oh, is this glued shut? No, it's not. Uh, it's most likely going to be a LTH7-style charge control chip and a touch sensor chip with a transistor to turn it on. I can already see a transistor over here. Okay, going straight to the battery connection, or is that another protection chip? Not really sure. Anyway, you know what we can do? We can take a picture of it and reverse engineer it and see what the circuitry looks like. I shall do that right now. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. And you know what? It's not a bad design at all. It's pretty good. The case, though, and this is odd, as supplied, it had the touch sensor on the entirely frosted side. But if you put it in the other way around, it kind of fits a bit better. And the touch sensor is then in this recessed clear area. I wonder if that was deliberate, that they had it swapped or if they've just accidentally misassembled it at the factory. But anyway, it's the other way around now. So what we have is the classic LTH7 charge control chip at next to the USB port. All the component values are marked, which is odd. So we've got a one microfarad decoupling capacitor, um, a 3.3K resistor for programming the charge current. It's going to be fairly low, but then it is quite a small cell. It's not marked. I don't know what the capacity is. One or 200 milliamp hour is my guess. Then there's a 1K resistor and a red LED just to show it's charging. Then we have a battery protection chip, which I really was not expecting. DWO3 uh, integrates the protection chip for over discharge and overcharging and it's got a 100 ohm resistor and a 100 nanofarad 10 and 40s in picofarad so 100 nanofarad capacitor for decoupling I'll show you that in the schematic and what that does is it interrupts a negative to the battery if it detects it's being over discharged which is good because this could get left on then we get the touch sensor chip which is Labelled here is a GL223B. Uh, there's a load of different clones of this chip, and uh, just 223B is all you need, and that's really all that's marked on here. And it has a, a 100 ohm resistor and a 1 picofarad capacitor for the sense pad. And uh, there's also, on the other side of this, there is a square ground plane behind that for sort of presumably noise immunity or screening it from the other side. And then for switching the LEDs, it has a J3Y uh, NPN transistor with a 1K base resistor and then a 10 ohm resistor for all the LEDs. And there is one extra LED position if you want to populate it with an extra LED. Uh, anything else worth mentioning about this? No, there's not, other than the fact it is very stylishly laid out. Now, the touch sensor, it's that uh, mesh fabric wrapped round foam, but it's got adhesive on one side. It's not conductive adhesive. They've literally stuck it in the circuit board and it just capacitively couples from your finger through the plastic to the mesh and then from the mesh to the printed circuit board pad. It's a double layer of capacitive coupling. Let's take a look at the schematic. And here is the schematic. So here is the USB connector. There is its one microfarad decoupling capacitor. There's the LTH7 super classic mass produced uh, charge control chip for lithium cells. 
And we've got the one key resistor coming from the five volt side, as is very common through the to the red LED and to the charge uh, indication connection on that chip, so that that red LED lights while it's in the process of charging. We get the 3.3k program resistor from the chip to the zero volt rail, and that sets the current. Um, and then we get the lithium cell here with its protection circuit with a little bit of filtering across it, the 100 ohm and 100 nanofarad, and then that feeds in and tells it, it if it's uh, being overcharged, over discharged, and turns it off. Then we've got the XX233B chip. I've just put XX there. There's loads of different brands and they use different uh, terminology. Now you've got two control pins in this. You can have the toggle pin can be taken low or high. If it's low, it doesn't, it's not active and it will just act as a sort of active while touched type thing. If you get the toggle pin on, it toggles on and off. The high and low is actually left floating here, but its default is output high. That determines the output state when it's touched. So if you're using it in this sort of momentary operation, you can actually set if the output's going to go high or low while you're touching it. There is the 100 ohm resistor, as there often is, to the touchpad, and then a little one picofarad across that. Um, I suppose I could also draw a sort of grounded line here, would be quite uh, appropriate, since that's what's on the circuit board. Then we've got six LEDs, a single 10 ohm resistor, a J3Y NPN transistor, and a 1K base resistor to that. Um, and that's it. It's very, very straightforward. I think the biggest surprises here are the protection chip more than anything else. The fact it's actually got that little layer of extra protection. And the fact that all the components are labelled on the circuit board suggests it's a refined design. So there we have it. It's just designed to be mounted in random locations, like in on the roof of your vehicle if your existing light has failed and you just want a quick fix in a cupboard or other place that you just need a splash of light that can just be recharged and has the symbol touch on, touch off. Very nice, very neat little light, much better than I expected. So this came from AliExpress. As always, I shall provide a link to it just in case you want to buy one. Um, but there we have it. Nice. Neat little light.